Can you tell us a little bit about working on Nightmare Alley with Guillermo del Toro? It was a bittersweet memory because I actually, it's crazy. I, I went out there for two months and mm-hmm. they gave me my own apartment and uh, I had 18 scenes. Oh, wow. And like I had a pretty substantial supporting role in it. And then they kept rewriting the script and rewriting the script. And there, I played like a freak character. Yeah. It's like this carnival. And there's about eight or nine of the freaks. And uh, I don't know exactly whose decision it was, but the word I got was that the freaks were a visual distraction uh, and that they weren't pushing the story along necessarily. Hmm. And uh, you'll notice when you watch that movie that uh, I think Bradley Cooper is in every scene in the movie. Yeah. There's like no, there's no subplots. <laughs> it, it's Bradley Cooper. It's the Bradley Cooper show. And he was also an executive producer on the movie. And um, he didn't want to wear any prosthetic makeup, which I thought was interesting. He had a gunshot that happens to his ear and he didn't want to wear the prosthetics. And I think he was not happy with the prosthetic look. Oh, I can't okay. speak for him exactly. I don't know whose decision it was. Yeah. But I, I, I think that ultimately what happened was that Guillermo decided to shift gears and not have so much fantastical elements within his show Mm -hmm. and he focused more on the bradley cooper character yeah and his journey and uh as a result i was only in one scene my (laughs) my 18 scenes got cut down to one scene at the end of the movie Uh, and i'm even lucky that i'm in it because a lot of the other freaks you don't even get to see them yeah like it was insane it was devastating because i had so many like fantasies and thoughts in my head about getting to act with willem dafoe and Oh yeah, Kate Blanchett and Tony Collette and Bradley Cooper and like an amazing cast. And I had scenes with all these guys and Ron Perlman. Yeah. So I was really stoked. I was like, this is incredible. And then I find out I'm only in one scene at the end. That devastated me. It almost felt like being a little kid and being told you're going to go to Disneyland. Yeah. <laughs> and then and they, and they show you all the rides that are going to be there. You're going to be on Pirates of the Caribbean, Space Mountain, right. all these great rides you've heard about for years. You get to go there. You're going to ride those rides. <laughs> and then I go to the gate and they're like, actually, no, you, you can watch. You can watch the other people ride on them. We, yeah. we don't have room for you right now. I'm sorry. Yeah. You just, you're going to stand at the gates and watch everybody else ride. And then at the very end, before the park closes, we'll let you walk down the main street. <laughs> and then you got to go home. <laughs> so yeah. That's pretty much what it felt like. So that's gutting. I, I had to take, I had to take that opportunity and realized that I was in a really cool city. I'd never been in Toronto before. So I did sightseeing. I saw some amazing places. I took field trips on my own. But most importantly, I wrote my own screenplay. Oh, interesting. And that's when I really grabbed the reins and said, you know what? I have got to stop waiting for other people Mm -hmm. to put me in things. I've got to stop waiting for other people in general. I need to tell my own stories. I need to be in charge of my own product. And so I did. I wrote my own screenplay. I wrote a murder mystery that I'm actually now producing. Hopefully, maybe at the end of this year, or early next year, I'm going to produce it and co-star in it. And it's something I'm really proud of. It's a murder mystery called The Stylus. 